Hello, in this tutorial, we'll cover creating a 3D terrain effect, so an endless terrain. So you'll be looking out at the terrain, it'll be continually coming towards you, and say third person or first person. Um, if <laughs> I'm dating myself, but you could think back to like a Star Fox type game, so an arcade type game. So at the end of this quick tutorial, you'll be able to craft a system that produces that type of endless terrain, and you'll be able to adapt that uh, for maybe a 3D game you're making on your own. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's a diagram just to help out to show what the terrain controller is, is doing. So in this perspective, we're looking down on the player. The z-axis is going this way. The player is looking out in this direction. Here's our terrain blocks that we'll have that are under control by the terrain controller. It's moving them towards the player. And then down here is sort of the reservoir of blocks, the catalog of blocks that we can pull into the scene as we need to replace them. This terrain starts to move towards the player. Eventually, a block will be behind the player to where the player can't see it. So at that point, the controller will delete that block and it will randomly pick another block to grab here and then place at the far horizon for the player. So the player will they'll lose sight of this block so we can make it disappear and then there's no reason to keep it around. And then we can place another block in the scene that's beyond the point of view of the player. And that just continues on during the entire game flow and never ends. To get started, we need just a general upper world scene for this terrain and these player to appear in. So let's create a new 3D scene. And let's just call that world. In the editor, we see sort of a default skybox uh, and lighting that Godot 4 provides. We can import that into our scene. We see those appear over here. So that now we'll see this skybox and lighting when we play the game. Let's go ahead and just save that. So now we just have our basic setup. Let's add our player. And that will be a character body 3D. And we see the warning here that he doesn't have a collision shape. That's expected. So let's go ahead and just add that. And that will be a collision shape 3D. And we're going to make our player a capsule. So we'll make the collision shape a capsule to match. Let's add the mesh. So we can see our guy, capsule, again, to match. And our player is stuck in the floor right now. <laughs> so a meter of him is above the floor, a meter is below. He's sort of centered. We want to move him up. Uh, if we move him one meter, he'll be right in line with the floor. We want to move him just slightly more, in our case, so that the player is not colliding with the floor part of the terrain that's going to be coming with us. That, that's to our advantage in this case. We'll rename him to player. So now we just need to have a camera. And in this case, we'll attach that camera to the player in sort of a third person perspective. So we want that to be behind him, above him, and sort of rotated down. Then we can click preview to see kind of what that looks like. It's look pretty good. He's blocking a lot of the scene. So one thing we can do is increase the field of view. In our case, we don't want to see his feet. So we can go forward a little, maybe rotate down a little. Let's check that out. We need to go quite a bit more forward. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We can adjust it later, so no big deal. Okay, so we have our player. Next, we're going to build a block of terrain in front of this player uh, manually so that we can in the scene so that we can see that it, you know, lines up the, the view that we want to have uh, in the game. Okay, in our game, our train blocks are going to be 3D meshes, uh, plane mesh, so just a flat plane, and we'll put some blocks on top of that as sort of obstacles. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. And we'll add a mesh instance 3D again, and again, we said it's going to be a plane mesh is a good choice for a floor, as you can kind of see there. We want to kind of increase the size of that, so we kind of want a, a wide wider than deep block. So let's go like 100 by 20. Not too important of that size, just that general size. We'll see we can change that pretty easily. Let's try and change the name to something like terrain zero, because we're going to have multiples of these. And let's move it. Oh, wrong thing to move. There we go. Let's move it out in front of the player just a little bit, and we can check that 
camera view, see that now we have some terrain in front of us. So now we'll add some obstacles. It's very common to have that be a static body 3D. Again, we see the warning here that it needs a collision shape. I think is what it's going to say. Yep. So just like our player, we need to add a collision shape to that. And we'll call this block uh, zero. Same sort of makeup as the player. We add a uh, collision shape. And that will be, in this case, a uh, box shape. We'll also add a mesh so that we can see it. There we go. And of course, a block for that also, so it lines up. We can see that our block is just like the player was originally halfway stuck in. So in this case, we just want to move him up, I think 0.5, because it's a meter tall. So if we moved up 0.5, he's right on the surface now. Now we just simply want to duplicate that a few times. We'll do that. Now we have block 0, 1, and 2. They're all in the same spot right now, so we can just kind of move those around. There we go. And we can, if we want, we can check our perspective again. See, yeah, so this terrain again is gonna be moving towards us. And in this game, we simply just wanna avoid those blocks. So we'll put in some side to side movement on our character. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and play the scene. Select current scenes, our only scene. And that should boot up. We're looking from the back of the player, third person. These are the blocks that we want to avoid in this game. If uh, we'll put in the logic, if we touch a block, we die, so. Pretty simple game, but we're just demonstrating the terrain as the goal of this tutorial. So that all looks pretty good. But again, we don't have any movement, so let's go ahead and add that now. And it'll be simple, just side-to-side -side movement. So pretty simple script. I'll just paste this in and kind of we'll go, not a lot of code, but we'll go over it just a little bit. First off, it has, the character has a speed, and you can set this to change the speed that will move side-to-side. Then within physics process, we'll pick up all the expected inputs. And I have another video that goes on a little more detail of building a character controller. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. So then we grab that input and turn it into direction vectors and make that, uh, combine that with the speed to move um, side to side. And the built-in method for that character body utilizes is move and slide. So it really takes care of everything for you once you set the velocity. And again, velocity is a built-in attribute of the character body. So again, not a video on character controllers, but just a sense of what this code's doing. So now when we play, we should be able to move side to side with the arrows. We are. Again, this train will be moving towards us, and then we'll be moving side to side to avoid it. That all looks good. So we're ready to A, duplicate this train. So we have multiple blocks to kind of feed into this conveyor belt of terrain that will be coming towards us. And then B, we'll build the code for that, which is really the, the heart of this video, is that code that controls the terrain. And then pull it back into this world scene. Okay, scene looks pretty good. So we need to extract this node into its own scene, and then we can duplicate that to make these terrain blocks to again feed into the conveyor belt. So that's easy to do in Godot. We just simply save branch as a scene. We do want to save it in its own folder. All the train blocks we're going to create. That'll make sense here at the script that's coming up. Let's go ahead and do that. So now we have in our file system, we have train block one. So let's go ahead and I'll duplicate that about four times and go ahead and speed that up on the video. Okay, there we go. So now we have four train blocks. They are in isolation out of the scene. They're all the same. We want some variety in each of them. So zero will leave as is, but then on one, we'll start to move these blocks around. And one quirk here is that if we just click in the scene, we can see that we selected the mesh and not the block. So if we drag this, we're actually just dragging the mesh, but we're leaving the block behind, which is not what we want. We want everything aligned. So let me go ahead and undo that. There's a couple ways to do this in Godot to make sure you're dragging the right thing. A uh, quick, easy one is whatever you've selected in the scene tree, uh, hold down Alt when you go to drag it, and then you can drag it in the scene, and you know that it's whatever you clicked on, it's, it's what's been the scene tree. So just a quick thing to do. Oops, and I didn't do it right there. So click the block, um, hold down Alt, and then drag. And again, click the block, hold down Alt, and drag. And you know it'll, it won't switch over to something else. Let's just continue on this, and I'll go ahead and speed this part of the video up. 
Okay, so now that's done. One more thing to do is that the floor needs to be something we won't fall through. It'll have a collision body of its own. These blocks won't fall through when we play the scene. And then to do that in Godot is quite easy. It kind of does it for you. So let's look at each scene and select the the plane mesh and click the mesh tab. And in this case, we're not too concerned about, see, you can see there's a lot of options that tell you, you know, this is fast, but not accurate, accurate, but not fast. Don't worry too much about that. And let's just create a tri-mesh static body. It says it's the slowest, but for our game, that's that's totally fine. So go ahead and collect that. You can see that it created um, the static body 3D and the collision for the terrain, and it makes it the same uh, shape as the mesh. So it's kind of just a, quick way to get a collision body for this plane mesh. So just do that for each one. Again, select terrain and create that and then save. And I'll speed this up also. Okay, we're done there. So I think that's everything we need. We have five terrain blocks and they have all their collision shapes. So the blocks will stay on top of the plane. And as they're fed towards the player, the player will collide with these blocks and that will end the game. So now we need to create this terrain controller that's going to move this terrain through the scene. So let's create a new scene, 3D scene, and call this terrain controller. There we go, let's save that. And really the only purpose of this node is to hold this script. So let's add a script, call it terrain controller. Create that. We didn't add any boilerplate code because I'll supply the code. Again, all of this will be in GitHub. So here there's a little bit more, it's not too bad. Uh, we'll go through some of it here. Essentially, this is the class that represents that conveyor belt system of terrain that is fed into the scene. And as terrain goes behind the player, it's removed from the scene. And then we append another piece of terrain on the horizon. We need to, we'll see, we'll need to do sort of some calculation of what's the position of that piece of terrain. A few members to this class Train blocks is just holding the file system paths to all these train blocks that we built and put into a specific directory. That's why they're all in one directory, because we just tell it which directory and then it loads all the terrain blocks. Terrain belt is the array that's going to hold the number of pieces of terrain that's in the system, and we specify that here. At any given time, there'll be four pieces of terrain in the system. We could change that to three two, one, one would be weird, but <laughs> depending on how many terrain blocks you have, those will be pulled randomly from sort of the catalog of terrain blocks uh, in this array and then instanced into the sort of runtime array of blocks that are in the scene. We'll, we'll cover that a little bit more here. Velocity is just how fast is that terrain moving towards the player. And again, we covered this. That's the number of blocks to maintain in the scene. And here we mention this, this is just, we just point to the directory where the blocks are and we'll see there's a method that uh, loads all those up. So in ready for this class, when it's added to this scene, it loads the terrain scenes. We give it the path and then it determines the file paths for every terrain scene in that directory. Initialize blocks, that's where we build up this terrain belt. We tell it how many terrain blocks we want to have in the belt at any given time and then it does the, the work for that. If we look at that here, again, it's just going through, you know, this would be one to four, so loading four terrain blocks. We do this four times. We pick one at random from the sort of the catalog. If it's the first one, we just put it at the first slot. If it's anything beyond the first one, we have to put it at the far edge of the current last terrain block. And we do it this way that allows our terrain blocks to be of any given width. They could be 20 meters wide. 10 meters wide, 30 meters wide. This will do the math to determine what that far edge is and where to place this next block so that it lines up with the previous one. And then we just add it to the scene and we append it to this train belt array. So those happen at the start. You can look at the details of, say, this function as an exercise of your own. Um, feel free to, to ping me in the comments or even on Twitter or uh, Mastodon. I'm happy to answer any questions. So that's what happens in ready. In physics process, so as the game is running, we run this method progress terrain. So that marches the terrain towards the user's point of view. And then it watches for if terrain goes behind the player, it knows that it needs to remove that block and then append another block to the horizon. So again, we're using this append to far edge method to determine the current last block, what's its far edge, and I want to append lined up right to that edge for this new block. So that's what's happening there.
the, a little bit going on, but you can kind of go step by step, see what's happening. And there's, you know, some comments here to help you out. But again, reach out if you have any questions. Now our train controller is complete. So let's pull it back into our main scene as a child scene. We just go back there and you can click this little link here, instantiate child scene. Brings up a browser. There's train controller. So let's bring that back in and go to the viewport. So now we can see it's just an element like anything else in the scene. Uh, it's right below the player. We should be able to play. So let's go ahead and try, see if we've done anything right. There we go. And we have movement from that uh, movement controller script we saw. The thing we'll see here though, is if we hit someone, it affects our velocity. And then the terrain starts to, we kind of fall behind the terrain generation. In this one, we're just going to make that the in-game state if we hit one of these guys. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's go to our player script and make that check here below move and slide. There's just a little piece of code here for collisions. So let me fix that indent. You can just call get last slide collision. And so if one returns, then we just print out a little debug statement and quit the game. And that's, it's real simple because we know if we're colliding, it's with one of these boxes. Because remember, we put our character just above the floor, so we're not colliding with uh, the little terrain plane. So very simple, sort of contrived example, but it, it works for this. The goal of this was to show you how to generate that terrain, not actually to make a a full on game. So now we can play that and do our best to avoid these little blocks. And of course, this game, you could cheat and just sit out here. But again, simple example. And let's go ahead and just collide with the block. And we die. So that's it. Really, this is a great start. It gives you the terrain controller. It's kind of standalone. Again, you can add more terrain blocks here. Again, they can be different widths. They can add sort all sorts of other obstacles to that. And it'll feed those in. Uh, if you have any issues, though, go ahead and you can connect to me. Uh, all my connection details are in the description below. So. Okay, thanks for sticking around. And we saw here we have sort of a general purpose terrain controller that'll produce that infinite terrain effect. And you can adapt this to a game that you might be building. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm starting to get into coursework, which we'll see on various platforms. So to keep track of that, so you might want to follow the link in the description below to my newsletter site at explorergame.dev. And that way you can keep track of those offerings as they come up. So thank you again, and feel free to click on any of these videos, and hopefully you'll find something helpful in those as well.